The Netflix series Song Exploder is awesome. I saw this sequence in a recent episode and I thought maybe I could actually do that. Now let's go frame by frame to see how they actually built up. It seems pretty random. Some of them come in as blocks and some of them come in as strokes. And then the colors fade in. They fade in left to right. That's a really nice touch. So the text, blue, two frames, green, two frames, white. Pink, two frames, green, two frames, white. So the second color is the one that correlates with the actual landing color. Bridge goes bright red, which doesn't exactly seem to correlate with the, the nice like pinkish red tones. That's the first thing out of this amazing animation that I don't, that I think was maybe not a mistake, but it could have been. That red color is actually the default when you do a color overlay. And it seems almost like they did a cover color overlay and then never changed it to the actual pinkish red. That I could be totally wrong with that, but it seems like it's just off. In other aspects of filmmaking, uh, you see a movie and it's like, well, that's amazing. And I can never do that. I don't have the actors, the crew, the lights, the makeup artist, the set decorator. But with motion graphics like this, I can make something that someone could mistake as the real thing. I saw that, it was amazing. Now I can do that exact thing. Well, you haven't done it yet. <laughs> Great, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Switching to a voiceover now to save some time, I created a rectangle and applied the repeater effect. It turns out the repeater does not actually work on solids. It needs to be a shape layer. So I created a shape layer that was a square. Within the repeater properties, I played with the number of copies and the offset to get it looking right. I duplicated that layer uh, a bunch of times, bringing it down the same number of clicks each time. I could not think of a super streamlined way to animate these boxes in. So I kind of kicked the can down the road and just moved on to the text. I roughly matched the fonts. The original was clearly using an alpha mat to transition the text out with that clean line. So I created a solid, stretched it out to be just barely covering the text, and then set the alpha mat of the text to that box. So now the text is only visible when it is directly in front of that box. The original had each word animating, not the entire lines. Uh, so I split up that text using a script called Text Exploder. You could also do this manually by duplicating it three times and you know, lining it up. This script allows you to really quickly cut it into characters, words, or lines, um, and not really have to play with the position at all. I then duplicated the alpha maps to make sure that each word had their own mat, then position keyframed each layer out, and easy ease the keyframes. I like to ease my keyframes with the plugin Motion 2, but you could also do this in the graph editor manually. I then offset the keyframes and moved my keyframes down farther in the timeline to make room for my animation in. The animation in looked a lot like a existing preset within After Effects called Random Fade Up. So I just added that. I adjusted the keyframes that the preset already made uh, to match roughly the timing of the original. And now the text just needs colors. I used a layer style color overlay. I set the keyframes to hold keyframes. Um, if they were not hold keyframes, they would fade from one color to the next and we'd actually get like a blue in the middle there, um, but we wanted to, to jump. I pre-comped all my square strokes and then in that pre-comp, I offset the layers so they populated in from bottom to top. I then duplicated my pre-comp that had all the squares and filled in all the strokes of those layers. So I had one pre-comp with strokes and one pre-comp with solids. Now here's the real work. I used three masks to subtract blocks of squares so that when a row appeared, only some boxes in that row were visible in the main comp. I used hold keyframes to animate the masks as the rows animated up and made sure to change the width and height of each mask to add some more randomness. It took me about 10 minutes to manually do this. I could spend a few hours on it if I wanted to get really granular with specific squares being masked out uh, instead of big blocks of squares, but this was kind of my quick and dirty way because I had never done this before and didn't really know an efficient way to do it. The original design had a really nice texture. I took a look at some of the textures I had saved on my computer from previous projects and found one that was kind of similar. I added that texture to my master comp. I toggled its underlying transparency so it was only seen on the areas that already had existing layers. 
uh, and doesn't spill onto the background. Then I added a blending mode, I lowered the opacity, uh, and I took the saturation to zero with the saturation effect. So now we just have the texture without any of the colors from the texture coming into the design. To make the texture pop even more, I added a curves effect and gave it an S curve. And, and with that extra contrast, um, it made the texture a bit more pronounced. To animate in the first color, I duplicated the solid block pre-comp and added subtract masks on each of the five rows uh, that would be blue, then added a color overlay, picking the blue hue from the original. The original has some really nice variety within each block of colors. Um, it's not just one type of blue. So uh, I duplicated my blue pre-comp and picked the lightest blue from the original and played with the masks a bit to give it some more randomness and then did that again with a medium darkness blue. This gives it a much more complex feel. Uh, in the reference, the colors really also look, they like look alive. And if you look closely, they come in from left to right and the colors kind of appear milky uh, before they turn their fully blue color. So I tried to replicate this by adding a white solid over the blue area and then feathering the hell out of it and using position keyframes from left to right. Uh, it kind of like subtly goes from white to blue. I then repeated the process for the rest of the colored sections using two or three different shades of each color within each block. Whenever I would animate a repeating color, for instance, the second and third blocks of orange, um, I would try my best to make as little extra work for myself as possible by duplicating the existing mask animations and just slotting them over to the new section. And then that's basically it. Woo!